Hi, this is Scott Ware with Radiance Channel and Radiance Magazine, and I'm here with John Burgos, the host of the Beyond the Ordinary show. Thank you for being here. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks you for inviting me. Absolutely. John, you are, this is the Conscious Life Expo in Los Angeles in February 2020, and you are here to talk about Ascension, and I mentioned you, you talk about that on your on your podcast a lot as well. Podcast, TV show, how well, do we you? We call it a, a tele-summit. A tele-summit. Yeah, and we, we do it that way because we interview thought leaders, really people who are bringing in spiritual information, psychic channels that are anchoring in these new energies that we have access to now. And so the tele-summits, we launch with different speakers at different seasons all the time. And we just keep offering these interviews as a conversation with people who are carrying a specific energetic. Yes. So that other people can, first of all, find that sense of home. It's like a place that we can have the conversation that you can't have somewhere else because you don't think anybody's going to understand you. Mm -hmm. um, and so mm -hmm. I created Beyond the Ordinary Show for that. Seven um, years ago. Seven years ago. Yeah. Wow. So you've got hundreds of episodes out there. Oh, yeah. You're going to learn a, th a thing or two. In fact, you're going to transform. And that's probably happened to you. What, can you talk about your journey of transformation? Oh, God, how much time do we have? <laughs> um, I grew up in an immigrant family, so there's a lot of scarcity, and there was a lot of violence growing up as a kid. And okay. So it really taught me to kind of go within and to really feel everything around me. And I think that's why I become such an in-tuned empath. I ah. can feel everything. I'm so sensitive. Because of survival before. Survival, but I also think that survival helped to amplify that empathy because I was wired for it. Okay. And that wired capacity energetically, I think, is what gives me the capacity to interview amazing channels and psychics because I can tune in, not just to their frequency, but to the collective that they're speaking to. And mm. it's amazing. So I just found that I had a natural propensity to carry the vibration when these channels come on and really acclimate to the energy and be able to translate it for our audience in a way that really grounds it, mm. is accessible, and it's applicable. Yeah. Very nice. Now, we're talking about ascension these days. You mentioned the change. When did you first know or sense a change in the energy that was out there and that we could more, we, we were capable of more because of that? I always felt that we were capable more as a kid, but it, the world didn't make sense to me. It's the environment that I surrounded myself in, and okay. what I grew myself around in. I felt it was always there, but there's, there was a shift that I experienced, um, and I call it when the dam broke open, and that was about 12 years ago. And when was, Amber? Uh, it, no, it was about 12 years ago. Okay. That the dam broke open. The dam moment. broke open, okay. Yeah. And so I went through these deep processes, initiation, where I did deep forgiveness work, and I got into core wounds uh, that seemed to stem from this lifetime, but I think they went much deeper. But what happened is that something within inside of me said that I finally had permission to not hold back this awareness that I had, okay. that I didn't have to try to fit in in a certain way anymore and just to be myself. And again, when that dam broke open, this psychic awareness came through and it was phenomenal. I was having prophetic dreams. I dreamed something and it come through two, two to three days later. I started seeing energy okay. from my hands. I started noticing people's auras where I didn't before. It was profound. Now, some people had traumatic events or they had near-death experiences and that ex is easy to explain why they're all of a sudden attuned to so much more. But it seems like what you just described, and I think what I've experienced in others, is that you're doing the work, you're progressing, and then you just shift. And one day you shift again, and you just notice these things. And I think you said something of that kind where um, all of a sudden you were able to give yourself permission. Not that anybody, a hand came down from the heavens and gave you that permission slip, but you gave it to yourself. So isn't that what most people can take from this in a sense? Just keep doing the work, keep moving along in your soul journey, and the shifts will happen. Maybe you'll start to see the things you're seeing now. Yeah. Is that what you would say? Well, and I would say it's not even the work anymore. It's like live life. Like allow ah. your life to open to this gusto that's I available like that. to us and not hold ourselves back because of preconditioned notions of who we have to be for someone else. And when we allow that to lead, instead of the conditioning, the limiting beliefs, those energies that hold us back, there's who we are becomes amplified. Right. Because whenever those limiting beliefs come up, it's not who we are, it's who we're trying to be based on somebody else's belief. Right. 
Which, but it's interesting. You say, let's forget about doing the work. Let's. That sounds hard. Maybe let's live. Let's learn to yeah. live more abundantly and openly, and the work will get done. Absolutely. Perhaps. But that's a that's a more positive way to look at, it, more progressive like that. I'll call it it's the real way to do it. What's that? I'll call it. I call it the real way to do it. Ah, I like I, it. I say that's the, really the organic flow that's happening with us. And so talking about ascension, mm -hmm. that's part of my discussion. Also, there's an organic flow that we're getting back into. Everybody talks about saving Mama Gaia. Yes. And about healing Gaia, but truly, I believe Gaia is a reflection for us, and she's reflecting to us where we need to heal ourselves. Ah. And there you so go. we want to go back to organic. We want to go back to a state of natural stasis. Yes. But really, that's Gaia's invitation for us to get into that flow. I don't believe Gaia is going to be destroyed or ever can be destroyed. Sure. But she's reflecting through her love. I like that. What's yeah. possible inside of us. Is ascension available for everyone? And do we need everyone to do something for things to move forward? Oh, it's absolutely available for everybody. Okay. And again, we don't need anything. Sure. And that's that's the beautiful part of it. When we let go of this thought that we have to control, that we have to direct, that we have to create something in order to survive, we're in duality again. Mm. And it's that duality that takes us away from the vibrancy that we have access to. So the invitation is really to get into unity consciousness and to know that everything is happening for balance, for homeostasis, for the organic flow of what's emanating naturally through our energetic being. Right. And as we create from there, now we're creating from art. We get away from this industrial type of creation for survival into creating for expression of our soul essence. And in that you can't help but to share with other people. You can't help to share, you can't help but want to share your abundance with others. Sure. And so then it becomes a cyclical effect where that's happening back and forth in relationship. And that's how we create prosperity, affluence, and abundance in this world. And that's where the ascension has taken us to. And we all have access to it. Some may not wake up to it. Right. Which isn't a bad thing. They're showing the opposite end of duality for those who are choosing to wake up to it. Yes. So they are a gift to us in many ways. Absolutely. So there's no right or wrong. It's what role are our souls taking in this so that there's a tipping scale yep. that is actually, I believe, happened, but there's a, a tipping of the scale that leads to a place where the generation of control, of manipulation, of trying to hoard and in scarcity is no longer running the show, that right. we amplify the light enough so that there's new way showers and leaders and people that are leading in their own communities. They're showing that there's a different way that we can get out of suffering and start creating from complete abundance. Beautiful. Yeah. You talk pretty. <laughs> I talk truth. Maybe that's yes, why you it's do. Pretty. I love yeah. it. And now, do you help people? Are you, are you a life coach or are you just pretty, the, the Beyond the Ordinary show is just taking all your time? I, Beyond the Ordinary show has been my full time gig for the last seven years. Yes. And it's been wonderful. And there's a calling out to teach more, to speak on stage more to take people on retreats. I take a sure. small handful of private clients. Okay. Um, but I don't do it very much because, again, the show takes up so much time and there's sure. other creations that want to take place. But yeah, there's there's opportunity to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. I've started taking people on live retreats in the island of Kauai. Oh, okay. Which holds amazing, just expansive energy for anybody who's called there. Um, take, taking a U-turn back to Ascension real quick, what what can people expect? What should they know about Ascension now? And is 2020 any different? Is the energy different? Is, is there anything new going on? It, yeah, there's there's a lot coming in. Um, in the Ascension process, I'm really called into the area of embodiment. Yes. And so through the Ascension process, a lot of us were going up and re reaching different levels of consciousness and having conversations with our I higher self, if you will, our spirit guides, the angelic beings that were leading us, and it's, it's been an integral process, but it's up to us now to carry that as our own, mm. and so I'm finding that a lot of channels, the psychics, even for myself that I interview, the channel isn't coming as loudly as it did before. Okay. It's coming more from within instead of from without, from outside of us. Right. And so by grounding it in, we're becoming walking examples of what we do, that energy in human form. So it's not Archangel Michael or um, 
your guides that are leading the show and prompting you where to go. But it's like, what are you creating with this amplitude of information and wisdom that has been awakened within you? And how are you choosing to express your love through that? Well, real quick before you go, can you give some tips on how to cultivate that inner life? What would you say to that? Oh my God, it's, it's, <laughs> it seems so simple, but and I get this over and over again. Whenever I get into anxiety or stress, I look out and I reach out to the guy. It's like play. Like who? Play. Play. Oh, just playing. Yes, just being play. playful. And remember, it's like get into the energy of play, like interrupt the anxiety, interrupt the fear, interrupt the doubt with the energy of play, of love. Take it into What do you do to play? It's, I do this. Yes, I, this is fun. I, I go outside and hike in nature. I jump in the ocean. I yep. get on a phone call with someone that I just enjoy being with. Right. Um, I explore different topics and consciousness of other thought leaders that are doing yeah, amazing work. Yeah, you've created a, a job that is play for you. My job is absolute bliss for me, yeah. Right, yeah. good for you. <laughs> All right, John, this was great. Um, obviously, tune in to Beyond the Ordinary because that's going to be a, just a great lecture illumination on where we are and where we're going with John and other thought leaders. And uh, like, who have you had on the show uh, recently that they can tune into? Oh, Casey, Brad, and Julius are oh, on the course. show consistently. Yeah. Uh, Paul Selig is an amazing channel who's been on the show. Lee Harris. Lee Harris, um, yeah. We've had Zoe Davenport. Um, Meg Benedicte has been on the show. Um, just amazing, amazing people. Even if you haven't heard of the people on there, it's I really do a thorough job curating the guests that come onto the show, and they're extraordinary. And again, it makes my job so easy. Sure. Um, and so every speaker is really bringing through a transmission and activation and awareness that when you leave the show, you, you walk away feeling empowered and uplifted. It's beautiful. Yeah. That's great. Beyondtheordinary.com is where they can find that. Beyondtheordinaryshow.com. Beyondtheordinaryshow.com. Yeah. And follow you on Facebook. Yeah, follow me on Facebook also at, okay. at John Burgos or Beyond the Ordinary Show. And Perfect. on Instagram, yeah. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you. It's a pleasure. All right. And thank you all for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> all right, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> and congratulations.